cave instructor based out of North Central Florida. I'm also a DiveSoft ambassador. DiveSoft posed the question to me, why do I prefer diving a rebreather in a cave over diving open circuit? Well, that's a great question. So it kind of goes back to the basic fundamentals of cave diving. As a cave diver, we're taught what we call rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is our gas management policy for cave diving. And what that means is we reserve one third of our gas supply to get into the cave, one third of our gas supply to get out of the cave, and we always reserve one third of our gas for emergencies. So as a cave diver, diving open circuit, that clock is always ticking as you're breathing, as you're consuming that gas. Eventually it's got to turn the dive, got to get out of the cave. With a rebreather, that's not the case and it makes things quite different. Now on a rebreather, you're carrying bailout gas. So now things change. Okay, so now how do I determine when I turn the dive? So turning the dive on a rebreather in a cave, there's lots of different factors. Scrubber duration is a factor. How long will my scrubber canister and my absorbent material last? How much oxygen and diluent do I have? Usually those things last quite a long time. And so a lot of times the limiting factor might be how much bailout gas you bring. And so now you can look at things quite differently. You look at your bailout gas and go, okay, based on my air consumption, based on my swim speed, based on how deep the cave is, based on how much gas I have with me, how far can I swim out in an emergency? And we never wanna be aggressive in that profile, right? We wanna be extremely conservative. We wanna plan for the worst case scenario. If you're trained on a rebreather, and you're diving a rebreather in a cave, chances are you wanna stay on that rebreather in the cave. And so why would I bail out? Most of the circumstances that would cause you to bail out and stay bailed out aren't real pleasant. Uh, CO2 hit, uh, if you flooded the rebreather, you know, those types of things cause a caustic cocktail. Uh, that would make you come off of the rebreather and stay off of the rebreather. And in that case, you become an open circuit diver. So now you have to think about, okay, this bailout gas that I have with me, how far can it get me out of the cave? But to, on top of that, you have to think about, well, if I have a CO2 hit, CO2 is gonna make me breathe harder. I'm gonna have elevated air consumption. Now I'm gonna to have to go through, I'm gonna potentially go through more gas. So because of that, we carry lots of bailout gas to make sure we can safely get out of the cave. However, if, if I'm carrying, say around here, I carry two steel 85s. So I have that much bailout gas. I can determine how far I can swim out with that gas. And let's say it's 2000 feet out of the cave. Now I can go and I can take my time and I can swim anywhere in the first 2,000 feet of that cave and I can look around, I can enjoy myself, I can take my time. You know, Ginny Springs here in Florida is a great example. If you've ever dived Ginny Springs, if you're a cave diver, you can swim up the main line 2,000 feet, come back, go up the bone line jump to 2,000 feet, come back, go up the hill 400 line. And so now, I'm getting to see thousands and thousands of feet of cave. As long as I never pass my scrubber duration, as long as I obviously don't run out of oxygen on my rebreather, as long as I carry sufficient bailout gas, I'm not in a hurry. There's no clock ticking per se. Now I can really take my time. I can really look around. I can really enjoy the cave. And to me, that's why diving, a, you know, a rebreather in a cave is, awesome compared to diving open circuit because you just don't have that clock ticking anymore. There's other benefits too. You dive in cold water caves. Obviously a rebreather is, uh, the loop volume is warm. So it's gonna help keep you warmer. So that could definitely be a benefit in some of the places where there's really cold caves. Uh, from a cave diving photography perspective, I like it because it allows me to have time to set up my strobes, set up, set up that shot that I wanna get, change lighting, change features and, and settings in my camera, and I, I never run out of time, right? It all goes back to that bailout gas and that scrubber duration. And so now you have a lot more time to, to do what you love and look around and enjoy yourself. 
And so for me, I think that's the perfect reason to dive a rebreather in a cave. Is a rebreather always the best tool for a cave? No, definitely not. Like I said, it does require you to carry additional bailout gas. So it does require complex, more complex dive planning, but it definitely can be a great tool for sure.